Right now, there is no drug approved by the FDA to prevent or treat any form of hearing loss or tinnitus. Demethionine is an amino acid, so it's a component of cheese and yogurt. It's found in foodstuffs, which is one reason I already knew that it was a safe agent. Your essential amino acid is the L-methionine, so that's more common in protein, but the D-isomer, uh, and isomers are just mirror image molecules of each other, so the D-isomer has different properties, but it's, pre but it's present in foodstuffs that are fermented from protein. I wanted to test it for noise-induced hearing loss. That is the most common cause of hearing loss worldwide. It's a huge problem in our military, of course. It's the most common reason why a soldier cannot be redeployed. It's also costing the Department of Defense and Veterans Administration two to four billion dollars a year, depending on how you count it. And so I really wanted to see if it worked for noise-induced hearing loss, which is a huge problem, and it did. So we, we did our early studies and the protection was, again, better than anything we'd seen with other agents tested around the world. If approved, this could be, uh, unless something else gets approved first, the first drug ever for that purpose. Now, we're not looking at curing long-standing hearing losses. If a person has had a hearing loss for a year, six months, it's probably not coming back with this compound. What we're looking at is giving it before a noise exposure, for example. You can even stop it a day or two before the noise exposure and still have protection. At Fort Jackson in our clinical trial, we're giving it before, during, and after their weapons training to measure protection. But we've also found in our preclinical data that we can wait up to 24 hours after a noise exposure stops. Give it at that time and keep that hearing loss from becoming permanent and reverse it back. We still have significant protection at 36 hours, but it's not quite complete. So that's very useful because on the military, uh, they can't always anticipate when a noise exposure occurs, such as battlefield, etc. You and I might not know when a noise exposure occurs if we go to a concert that's too loud, our car airbag detonates, etc. And so to be able to take something within a day that will keep that hearing loss from becoming permanent can be extremely useful. When I came here, I got a grant from National Institutes of Health called a K08 award, which is basically to transition someone from clinic into basic science, even though my PhD was basic science oriented, to build that bridge from bench to bedside training. And in that, uh, I studied pharmacology. I took another five years of chemistry pharmacology after my PhD, after coming here. And so I started, after those five years of looking at mechanisms, I started looking for protective agents. And I basically hit the literature. Every night after dinner, I'd pull out articles and chart them according to various categories I'd set up. Criterion, they had to have been used in humans, they had to have good safety factors, they could be taken preferably orally. I set up all, just a whole host, and so I just started charting. Every night I'd chart more and more and more articles. And so I finally selected four agents. DMET was the second agent I tested, and when the animals came up, they had no hearing loss. So I'd learned enough about patents at that time to go down, apply for a patent. We repeated the studies immediately because I thought at first maybe the results were too good to be true. And then we started using it as a protective agent. Since then, those results have been replicated around the world.